Hey, 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 let's talk about mentors come into the room, the dream catch a room. I'm going to pin it. Okay. Come into the room, my lovelies. Come on, dream catchers. Come on in. First of all, let's acknowledge the side pony because, yes, my locks are slaying. I had it in my messy home bun, but I was like, let me get cute for y'all. Uh, well, cute is because I don't got my eyebrows on and nothing on. I mean, a little lip gloss because lips always got to be popping. No, honestly, I want to talk about mentors. I was talking to my sister earlier today, and she was asking me something. And I said, don't ask me no Googleable questions. I'm going to say it again. From the book of Tiffany. Chapter 4, verse 3. Don't ask me no Googleable questions. What does that mean? That means I was teasing her. I was just telling her, like, girl, basically do some work. That so many of you guys ask me, like, how, oh, heartburn. I just had pizza for dinner. So many of you guys ask me, how do you get um, a mentor? How do you um, attract a mentor? How, you know, just, yeah. How do you do your lip gloss pop? And thank you, Bert's Bees. It's called Smooch. Um, and so I thought, like, I talk about it today. Like, how do you attract, like, a mentor into your life and people who want to help out? And so, well, first things first. I pop up. Who's all the honey? Anyway, um, some of y'all don't even know. Name that, name that song. Name that artist. But, no, honestly, first things first, that if you want to attract a... I put my AC on because it's hot in here. If you want to attract a um a mentor, you have to be doing the work. People like getting on a moving train. People like helping people that are helping themselves. Someone type that in. People like helping people that are helping themselves. Um, so we're talking about mentors if you're just coming in. So meaning that sometimes you will want a mentor that you are not ready for. Meaning that your mentor maybe is at step 100 and you are at step negative 10. And there's nothing wrong with step negative 10, but at least at step one, you've taken one step. So the higher up typically that your mentor has gone, the more they're going to want you to have also done some work. Because if your mentor especially, or mentor to be, or someone that you're really interested in working with, if your mentor is someone who is currently um, in, like, because some people are still in the business. Because there are people who are mentors who are, like, retired or they, they've slowed down. But if your mentor is kind of, like, still working, then they're going to be busy. And so busy people don't mind helping people, but they want to help people and know that that help is actually going to be utilized. When someone hasn't started yet, you're not really asking for mentorship. You're just you're just kicking around. It's like asking for, you know, when you have a realtor come out to show you a house and you haven't even got pre-approved. You haven't even looked at, like, how much you could get your mortgage for. You haven't done any of the work. Because then it's like, well, you're not really serious about buying a house. So you have to have done some work, you know. You have to have done some work. Um and I mentioned earlier that stop asking people Googleable questions. That's why I told my sister, go like, stop asking people Googleable questions. What I meant was like, that is part of the doing the work. What steps can you take with whatever and the little bit of knowledge that you have, whatever you can find via Google, like what can you start to do to get the ball rolling in your favor? So that way, when you approach somebody with a question and you approach somebody with an ask, you've done some work and your conversation shows you've done some work. So I'll give you an example. So instead of saying, I'm trying to give an example. Instead of saying, oh, so let's just say you want a, a baker mentor, right? Instead of saying, go into this master baker and say, how do I bake a cake? You say, how do I bake a cake? Let the baker mentor know you ain't even tried nothing. Have you gone to the store to pick up a cake box? Because this the directions are on the back, right? So it means you haven't even started any work and you're wanting this master baker that has five stars and diamond and bakery all around the world to tell you what you can find at the back of a back of a, of a of a um, baking baking um, mix box. Mm -mm. Here's a different type of question to show you've done the work. Hi, Master Baker. So I've been baking, and I noticed that my um, the icing 
get stuck to the cake, especially if I use vanilla versus chocolate? What can I do to get my chocolate icing to go on more smoothly than the vanilla icing? You see what that is? It's like you have shown that you've done some work and you're asking a thoughtful question that's shown that you've done some work. And I know some people are like, oh, this is common sense. Y'all say that, but you stay in my inbox with Google questions. So hee hee ha ha, joke's on you. I see you, right? And so doing that extra work, doing going that extra mile, and the more work that you've done, the higher tier of mentor that you will attract. That so many people don't want to do even the most basic amount of work. Um, you know, they don't want to put one foot in front of the other. Your mentor or, or someone that you look up to or someone that you want to emulate is not there to vet your, um, I'm interested in this maybe. They're not there to vet that for you, you know? So someone, oh, she said, I love you so much. She said, why are you calling me out? It's okay. I've been there where I've been like, hey, first when I first started, asking all kinds of questions like, hey, how do you write a book? Ma'am, do you have 12 years to, for me? I mean, Tiffany, do some work. So I started to do work so I can ask actionable questions. Okay, so I wrote a book and, you know, I don't really have money for editing. How can you find an editor that might edit my book for a low cost? But you see what I mean? Showing some like initiative that you've done something, the more work you've done. So I've got two hardcore mentees and like a few like soft mentees, right? And so, uh, much more than a few soft mentees. And so, um, one of the reasons the two hardcore mentees really attracted me to being their mentor is you know, they, they're doers. When I talk to my mentees and I mention something, whatever, next time I talk to them, they're like, girl, you know that thing you said? So I did this, I did this, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. So what do you think if I do this and that? And then I'm like, oh, snap. So it's a joy to pour in. There's literally times I just called my mentee today. I was like, girl, you didn't pick up EC. I called you. Because literally, I'm so excited because they put the work in so much. When I learn a new lesson, literally, I will legit pick up my like my, my call. Brandis, girl, I done learned this new lesson. And it's going to save you millions, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, girl. So what I learned was like, it, I get excited to pour in to them because I see the fruits of my labor in that they do the thing. Not necessarily all the things that I suggest, but they're doers, they're they're implementers. Nobody wants to talk to a person that you have poured into four or five, six hours on this thing they said they want to do. And the next time you talk to them, they say, I changed my mind, girl. You know, I'm going to do something different. You know, like, that's time wasted, you know? And so, and also, too, just be mentor. She, like, uh, someone said, you're my mentor in my head, right? So that, too, I have a lot of mentors in my head. To, every mentor is not someone that you necessarily get to speak to, like, one-on-one. -on -one. There are people on... Um, Instagram that I follow and YouTube especially that I will find somebody who I'm like, oh, I like the way they think. I like the way. So I'll find all the podcasts that they've done. I will find all the interviews that, that they've done. And I've read like you want to know some mentors in my head. I know we all have jokes about Will Smith right now, but he's a mentor in my head. Google Will Smith wisdom and see if you don't get your whole life. You know who else is a mentor in my head? Fellow Jersey girl, Queen Latifah. I love Queen Latifah. You want to know why? Because Queen Latifah is immensely successful and authentically herself. And I was like, wow, that's goals to me. So I have never met Queen Latifah, right? And But I study, I watch because I'm like, look how she shows up as herself and has carved a niche for herself where she's respected, she is liked, she's successful, you know? So, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, oh, um, oh, it was something that was good too. I forgot. It was something that I meant to say. And I knew I should have said it early because, you know, I had that meant... A, um, brain of an 80 year old when it comes to my memory there was something else I wanted to say it was juicy it's gonna come to me so yeah oh um, darn it what was it and sometimes too with your your mentees like I don't expect anything in, in exchange for my my mentees except for implementation that's how you pay me when oh that's what I was gonna say so um someone asked me the other day because I, there's, there are people who I just pour into because I think they're doing dope things. I see a dope thing. Like I applied for Inc. 100. They have this um top 100, uh, Inc. 100, top 100 women founders. I applied. I was like, you never know. And they asked at the bottom, can you please suggest another woman founder? So I reached out to a, 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 a woman who we are like social media friends. She's cool. But I think what she's doing is dope. And when I see dope opportunities, I think of her. And I was like, oh, hey, sis, I want to I wanna um, suggest you. What's the official name of your business? And I suggested her. She was like, wow, 
you've poured into me time and time again. She asked me, get into this, come closer, catch this tea. She asked me, you've been so helpful, whatever. And like, cause like I said, this is not the first time I poured into her. What can I do for you? That's what she asked me. What can I do for you? And you know what I told her? Nothing. Prayer. That's what I told her. I said, because I have a huge opportunity coming my way and I'm really excited about it. And it's going to be a game changer. I mean, it's a legacy changer, legacy changer. If it all works out and I just want a uh, prayer for like, you know, discernment and for, you know, just for good things. And she said, okay, because I have learned this. Do not waste an ask. So what does that mean? Could I have come to her and be like, ooh, sis, can you do this? This is but I had to ask myself, is there something especially special that I would that I need that she uniquely can provide? Is there? And then there's there's some things that she's really good at, and I'm like, you know, I could ask a little bit. Do I need that thing right now? Then it's a wasted ask. I don't believe in wasted ask. People ask me all the time because I'm the type of person behind the scenes that if I see something, if I know you slightly, I'm like, ooh. This, this is a good opportunity for you. Slide in your DMs. Here's a link. I think that you should sign up for this. Like, oh, you know what? Um, like just the other day, who was it? It was a huge, huge, huge fast food chain. I won't say names. They wanted me to do a keynote. We all know this fast food chain. They're like, Tiffany wants you to do a keynote. I wasn't able. So I, I hit up a few key people. I said, I can't do this keynote for this huge fast food chain. I'm not available, but I want, I don't like saying no. I like saying I'm not, I'm not able, but here's who's able. So I got a list of five people who I thought would be a good fit and submitted them. And so I do, I've been doing that since, 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 right? So I've been doing that for, since forever. Um, like literally like in elementary school, middle school, high school. Like I've always been someone who's like, Ooh, this is a good thing. Share. I'm, I guess because I'm, um, I'm, I'm a one of five, uh, girls. So I learned that, um, I learned to share. So when something is a good thing, I like sharing it. So as a result, the few times that I need something that I'm not able to get for myself, I don't know in the last 10 years that I've ever gotten enough. I'm not talking about as budget needs to now with this big business or whatever, or medium business or whatever. I'm talking about even from the beginning, I don't know that I've ever gotten enough because I believe in pouring into people and not pouring into people, um, with the hope that they'll do something for me. No, not at all. But I believe in like giving for giving sake. But one thing I do know is giving activates abundance. I'm going to give you the extra pony for that one. Giving activates abundance. Okay. Giving activates abundance. I Look, I just messed up my beautiful ponytail. Giving activates abundance, right? The more you give, the more you are open to receive. So... I, like I said, you, I don't believe, you, you're not supposed to be giving for giving sake, but honestly, giving activates abundance. And so whenever I need something, like I said, it's, I don't, honestly don't really, I don't ask for too much. So whenever I ask for something, there are people who I've been pouring into for 10 years who are like, finally, girl, finally, I could do something for, tell, it ain't nothing, girl, tell me, tell me. And I'm like, oh, you know, I just, can you introduce me to, yeah, it's done. Cause consider it done, you know? And so, and always remember this, that you always sow what you reap. You don't always sow where you reap. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. You always sow what you reap. You don't always sow where you reap. What does that mean? It means that you could be giving, giving, because that has happened to me before. You think people haven't taken advantage of me all day. All day. That's just happened to me so many times. I've gotten, had more discernment of like knowing who to pour into, but sometimes, you know, you still slip up. I slipped up recently. I was like, oh, you got that, sis. Oh, you played me. <laughs> you played me. Okay. So here's my, my, my philosophy is I'm not going to tag you, meaning that, that, well, you off the gravy train now. I'm not, you know, like when these big organizations and things hit me up, I'm not putting your name down on the list, but I'm also not going to drag you. Meaning that I'm also not going to speak badly about you. And now me and my bestie, we might get a little giggle on in our group chat because I mean, hello, I'm human, but I'm not going to drag you out here in these streets as you deserve. You know who I'm talking to. So anyway, right now, but for real, that, um, I want you to just be mindful of that, that like that giving, you might give and give and give and give and give and give here. And that person or that entity doesn't give back and you feel like, dang, they took advantage, but not necessarily true. That as you're giving here, you're actually receiving here. I can't tell you how many times I've given here and then something will come around. I'm like, wait, what? 
huge opportunity. Oh, wow, where did that come from? It came from the karmic energy I put in giving here. So where somebody thinks that they played me, congratulations, you played your what? Yourself. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Y'all know I'm crazy. I don't even think I'm going to save this live. But, um, yeah, you just, I just want you to, I just want to talk about, um, mentors and how do you attract good people to you by doing the work? Be dope. That the doper you are, more pe people are watching you. When I tell, I promise you, people are literally watching you. I can't tell you how many people, literally, this is what's happening. You right here, ground level. People are watching. They're like, ah, when Tiffany gets here, I, I got her. So you get here, someone swoops in. It's like, hey, girl, what you up to? You know, let me help you out. Okay. Okay. Then you get here. You're like, ooh, next level people are like, oh, girl, what you doing? Okay, let me help you out. Oh, you get here. I'm telling you, there's certain things now where I'm like, things will slide. my my People want to know, like, if you don't know, <clears throat> now you know, another uh, um, a biggie reference, that I was uh, recently on the most recent, uh, recent um, uh, season of Queer Eye, season five, episode four. And uh, people are like, how'd you get on Queer Eye? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Slid into my DMs. Hey, I'm a um, Queer Eye producer. Would you like to be on? Yeah, right? And you want to know why? Because giving activates abundance. She was like, I think she said that she took one of my free literature challenges where these free online courses that I do. And um, they're still free even if you need help with budgeting, debt, credit, savings, home buying, net worth, all that is free. Go to livericherchallenge.com. Write it down. Remember it, Live Richer Challenge. Someone type it in there for me, livericherchallenge.com. Right. So I think she said that she took that and it helped her because giving does what activates abundance. So she took that and it, she might have taken that a year or two ago. And as a result, now here it comes you sowing and you reaping. And so people are like, what? Yes. Slid into my IG DMs. Can you imagine? So just knowing that as you're putting out there, you're putting out good vibes, good energy, um, you know, you're being of service to others. You know, you're trying not to have make sure, you know, just putting out goodness out there into the world. Know that goodness is coming right back to you. Okay. Yeah. Live with your challenge.com. Yeah. Paying it forward. I don't, I try not to worry when people play me out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful because I'm like, obviously no one wants to get played out and I'm just mindful like, oh, okay, we'll do that again. But I try not to worry because people tend to, your life tends to be its own reward or punishment. Meaning like, you know, if you do enough people dirty, then it comes back. You know, you get dirt on your clothes. Um, and so your life tends to be its own reward or punishment. Mm -hmm. mm -mm 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 -mm. Queer Eye, yeah, she said, love you on the show. Yes, giving activates abundance. Can you believe what? What y'all talking about? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sowing good seeds, always sowing good seeds. But even into yourself. Sowing good seeds. Like I call something called my daily deposit. Like you say you have a dream, right? Like I think about this. 10 years ago, literally 10 years ago, 2009, at the end of 2009, I lost my job as a preschool teacher. And now I have five companies. Five? Yes. Budgetista, Literature Academy. I have this company, a marketing company. I have, oh, I have uh, Molly Moore, my company, my, my children's book company, my children's I guess education company. And I also have my podcast, Brown Ambition. That's actually a company too. So five companies that do very, 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 very well. Seven figures a month. And I said a month. And so what does that mean? Like, you know, that you can go in 10 years from preschool teaching. I think I maxed out at $50,000 a year to doing more than that a month. You know, honestly, doing that sometimes a day. I mean, not even sometimes, most times. Um, and so what does that mean? How it's those daily deposits. It's that daily working on those goals and dreams. And the work is sometimes journaling It's sometimes just thinking about it. It's sometimes doing your Googles. It's sometimes sending your emails, sometimes doing the actual work itself, like daily deposits. A day doesn't go by. A day doesn't go by that I don't make a deposit into my future. Like I said, sometimes even I might not open up my laptop. I could just be going for a walk thinking about a master plan. Sometimes I'm listening to a podcast. Sometimes I'm taking a shower. Like, and then when I used to be nervous about doing public speaking, I used to practice in the shower because in the shower, you know, you can't like read your notes. You, you have to know it. So I'd be practicing. I remember before, 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 I swear I can speak. 
before I first stepped on the Essence stage, I used to pretend that I was on stage in Essence in the shower all the time. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. Because, <laughs> you know, we got to clean this. Yes, my name is Tiffany the Budget Nista. And I'm so glad to be here. Like, I used to practice in the shower. So one day when I speak at Essence, and I've spoken at Essence more times than I can remember. And so preparing for that day, are you doing your daily deposits? You know, so many say you say you want something. You want to eat an apple. Are you planting apple seeds? You know, that's the only way you're going to eat an apple, right? Are you planting apple seeds? And the, the planting is supposed to take a, a long time. Do you know how long you got to take to plant seeds, to look after them, for them to have sunlight and rain and, and tilling the soil? It's supposed to take a long time because what happens is, is that this, right? You plant a seed and you plant a seed in 2010. You don't get to finally eat that seed until maybe say 2015 because that seed finally grows into a tree that bears fruit. So for those five years, you feel like to yourself, nothing is happening. People who give up, plant a seed in 2015, plant a seed in 2016, then they stop. Then in 2020, that 2015 seed grows and they're like, oh snap, and they eat in. And then that, that 2021, that 2016 seed grows. They're like, oh, snap, and they're eating. They forgot. They stopped planting in 2016. So 2022, 2023, 2024, ain't no, ain't no reaping because they stopped planting. And so that's what you don't understand. When you see what's happening with me now is I've never stopped planting seed. 2009 hit. I lost my job. I took an L that year. I was like, Ooh. but I started planting seeds in 2009 for the life that I wanted to live now. Even honestly, when I was a preschool teacher, I used to literally drive. I live in Newark now, but I didn't live in Newark then. I used to literally drive to Newark from, um, um, it was like 45 minutes away where I lived. And I remember I used to see, because Newark has an international airport, I used to see planes flying into Newark because I, I used to open up the daycare center where I worked at preschool. And it was like, you know, I think I had to get to work at like 7 a.m. And I used to tell myself, one day I'll be going into Newark to get on those planes. This is preschool teacher Tiffany with no, how could I know? You know, one day I'm going to be driving to Newark, not to go to the preschool classroom, but to get on these planes. And sure enough, sure enough, within 10 years, that's exactly why I was going to Newark every single week, it seemed like, to get on a plane to speak somewhere so someone could pay me thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars to speak, you know? And so, um, yeah. What's, what does not letting someone play you out mean? Oh, huh, that's cute. So when, so someone, when someone plays you out, that just means that they mistreat you. So let's just say you're dating someone. Um, and you know, he says that you're the only one that you're dating, but you find out that he's dating four other women, which normally that's fine, but you were untruthful. So he played you out when Basically, you were mistreated and you didn't catch it. That's being played out, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, it's funny how we have these are the things that we say, right? That people don't get. I'm like, yeah, someone plays you out. That's what it means. <laughs> she said, I don't understand. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, and it doesn't always, someone said, um, it oftentimes doesn't even take that long. Life can really look different. Yes, in three to five years. Well, absolutely. But I'm telling you this because people see now, like, you're one of the budget needs to, no money. You're two of the budget needs to, no money. You're three at the budget, and he said, no money. You're three and a half, a little bit of something, but just enough barely. You're four, okay, a little something. You're five, we making a little. You're six, okay. You're seven, yes, yes. You're eight, okay. You're nine, huh, I'm, <laughs> we buying the house. You're 10 is where I am now. Do you see what I mean? That um, people stop planting because they don't see the results soon enough. And then you stop. And then you, what you realize is that you have stunted your own growth. I have never stopped planting. 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13. I still plant now, viciously so, because I can only imagine what 2030 is going to be. And I will continue to plant because I can only imagine what 2040, 2050 is going to be. You have to be a consummate gardener. Keep planting. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Don't stop. Get it, get it. You're welcome, Zyceria, about what um play you out means. Mm -hmm. 10 years is serious change. Yes, playing the long game. And so, yes, in three or five years, you can certainly see some change, but that doesn't mean you're going to see some money. You know, I see a lot of people now, one of my mentees was saying, oh, she had like, um, she, her business did a launch and it made like, I don't know, like $40,000 or something like that. She's like, yeah, I feel kind of depressed about it. I'm like, $40,000? My first year in business, I don't think I made $10,000. I was like, ma'am, we have such um, um, distorted um, 
just like distorted ways of thinking about what movement and growth should look like. And I'm like, because social media, I get it. But like, yo, I didn't see $45,000 probably till year four. And I was like, oh, snap, you cute with your $40,000 a year. Man, like, yo, I'm playing the extra long game. I, I'm going to be here 10, 20 years from now. There are some things that are in the pocket right now, if y'all only knew. But that's because of uh, you keep going and you create things with the sense of longevity. I'm not here to make big spikes. I'd rather a slow burn. I want to be a low-grade fever. I don't mind. Because it's in that, it's like, okay, I want like I, I want to be here a long time. Like those spiky businesses, which there's nothing wrong with that. Because some people are just in it. They want to get their money and get out. And that's cool. I'd say there's nothing wrong with that. But I know for myself that this, my goals are to like grow this a business that will be here for, for a long, 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 long time and provide consistent income, not just for myself, but for the people who work for me, you know? Don't stop, get it, get you to please save this life. I likely won't. Money is not everything. It's a tool. It's all in how you use it. No, money is not everything. But I will say that without any money, it's very hard to maintain life. What will you eat? Where you, where will you sleep? To me, money is a tool like a hammer is a tool. You can use money as one of the tools to build your life. Or you can use money as one of the tools to destroy your life. A hammer is not the only thing that can destroy a house. A hammer is not the only thing that can build a house. But it is certainly a tool that um, it's the most likely tool, one of the tools that you're going to use. So when people say like, oh, money doesn't matter. I'm like, well, how will you eat? Where will you live? You know, like the truth is, I mean, y'all probably see me do a, 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 a live in this shirt like I wear this shirt at least two or three times a week. Okay, it was laundry day. I was like, yeah, shirt, sure, come on. I went to um, I went to Australia a few uh, like a few years ago, and I bought this shirt there. This is my favorite home shirt. And um, so, without money, you know, money helps you experience life with some security. And so, for me, there's nothing wrong with buying fancy things if that is so. Is that, that is so what you desire? Um, but Let's not pretend like you don't need money to be. So if your grandma's sick and they're like, we have, we need money for a new heart or a new money is important then. So just being mindful that like we live in a society where we can't pretend as if money doesn't mean anything because it does. Um, does it, does it equal happiness? No, but can it cause great harm? Yes. Because if I am starving or homeless or hungry or sick, absolutely. So just being mindful of that because yeah, like sometimes people say that when they're struggling with money and i'm here to say as someone who has been in between i have literally had zero 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 where literally it was a change in my purse that's left where i was like thank god i can eat at um in my parents house tonight because i don't know what i'm gonna eat i have been there i have been making a little bit of money you know relatively speaking as a preschool teacher i have made medium money relatively speaking as like a an entrepreneur maybe like five years in and i have made amazing money you know, as a, as the entrepreneur that I am now, and it's only going to get greater than greater than now. And so, yeah, I think that like I, from someone who has seen every perspective except for maybe like the uber wealthy, um, I can say that some of my happiest times were when I was actually my brokest. But those were also some of my stress, most stressful times because I was like, "Well, we gonna eat, we're gonna live." So there's something to be said either way. Oh, she's like, can we be best friends? Let's have some be best friends, girl. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, Double Dutch Aerobics. Those are my people right there. She said, you're so encouraging. I marry your confidence. You know, so my mentee, um, my, my, um, I have a new admin. Hey, shout out to you, Ebony. And she asked me, like, how do you grow confidence? And this is what I will say. That I wasn't always, and I don't even, I don't know if I consider myself confident. I guess. I don't think about it. That I told her that one of the ways that I've grown, I guess if you can call it confidence, is that I have figured out the thing that I am really good at and that I really enjoy. And I do that thing, which is teaching. Like, I love doing these lives because this is just me being teacher Tiffany, right? And so when I do that, I can forget about other things. I actually taught myself, because before I used to go live and I would have to be like, let me fill in my eyebrows. Let me get a little uh, mascara on and some um, eyeliner. Let me, um, you know, well, I mean, my skin is usually pretty clear, even though I'm like, because clear is that time. But let me, you know, like, so I, I used to force myself to come on with nothing on. So I can, if you look at like some of my earlier videos, I'm doing this. 
I'm like, so, um, because I felt nervous about how I looked. And I don't know. I, um, I've learned to lean into um, the thing that I am good at, which is teaching, and the thing that I enjoy so I can be in the zone. So I'm not worried about that because the if I was worried about the way I looked now, then um, as we're to, like me speaking, then you would feel uncomfortable because my, my, I would, you're human. So my feeling of feeling uncomfortable and self-conscious would be passed to you. It would be like secondhand embarrassment. And you would feel it because you are human and you can feel me because I am human. So I learned that if you are to not think about it, then I have to not think about it. So like I've learned that, that like it had, it took a lot of practice. So now I can come on here and just be like, whatever. Sometimes I'm like, you know, y'all know, sometimes I come on here with a big face and I'm like, I'm slaying for the gods. And sometimes I come on here like this, nothing. Although I do have my lip gloss on because... A sister's lips are naturally chocolate, <laughs> you know? Um, so I've learned to practice. And you know what's so crazy? Some of y'all are blocking your own blessings. I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all are blocking your own blessings. How so? Here's how so. So I can't tell you how many times major news outlet, TV shows have said, I seen you live. I've seen you on IG. I've seen you... You are so nervous because your eyebrows are not as full as you want, as you, you want them to be. That your your skin is not as smooth as you'd like it to be. That you maybe got a little a little like you know. Although I've been using this thing and my under eye darkness is like honey child. Who who remembers that honey child? I said all the time, what child? Like my under eye is like getting snatched for the gourds. I use this thing called um butter bar butter something. Anyway, they have this under eye thing and I've been using it. But some of y'all blocking your own blessings because your edges is not as um as full as you want them to be. So you're not coming live and the producer and the media outlet and the big organization and they they would have seen you and they would have hired you had you only stepped up and said, I don't have to be perfect. I just have to be me. Okay, if I don't have to be perfect, I just have to be me. Some of y'all, I can't tell you how many times, literally today, Cosmopolitan Magazine in my inbox twice this week. I'm like, do y'all talk? Because you want to interview sis twice? Why see you on IG, sis? They're in here right now. Some of y'all watching right now are from major media outlets and you're finna email me later. I know I see you. I'm ready. You see what I mean? Like, come, you don't gotta be perfect. You just gotta be you, right? So, I mean, some of y'all are just, I mean, I get it. It's scary. What are people gonna say? I mean, they're gonna say what they're gonna say, but I, they're gonna say why they watch me on TV. You think people haven't come for me? Of course they've come for me. People have said like, um... Like, I, I, I had Invisalign, and um, I used to have, like, a lot of gaps. And I would still come on here live, smiling, and grinning. And, <laughs> and someone was like, ooh, she should budget for braces. I'm like, I can't hear you because I'm on TV. Okay. <laughs> you know? And so, like, I get it. But I'm not going to live less of a life because somebody who, you know, want to have jokes has jokes. I mean... It is what it is. You have jokes, but then I'm just like, ah, you know, it just is what it is. I, there's so much out there to get. When I tell you, it's not as hard as you think. Once you put in enough work, a door unlocks and you start to realize like, wait, making money is not that hard. Wait, success is not that hard. Actually, if anything, I was just telling my admin, Ebony, today, I said, I'm overwhelmed, Ebony. And she was like, I know your inbox is crazy. And I said, yo, when I tell you opportunity after opportunity, I have reached a point where every opportunity is big and I can't possibly say yes to them all. So I'm feeling overwhelmed because it's like, do I take a 10, a nine and a half, a 10, an 11, a 10? And, and I'm like, ah, I can't do them all. Like literally, but that's from consummate planting. 10 years of planting where now, like I'm so even now I have to learn a new way to be. How, what do I say yes to? What is truly in alignment? Because all is good. I had to literally tell like, folks, like, I, I just, I can't. I know, hey, multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar corporation that wants me to do a, a keynote, I can't because I have to do this other thing. Oh, hey, huge car company that wants me to do a, what I can't because I got to do that. So, but that is what's waiting for you on the other side. Ain't nothing special about me. There isn't. I think I, that's why I love, that's why I feel like when I look at myself, why God made me like, you know, I'm cute, eh? you know. He was like, I'm not going to do it to them. I'm not going to do it to them, Tiffany. We're going to keep you cute, but you know, we're going to keep you humble. 
<laughs> no, for real, I really believe that that there's nothing extra. I'm sorry for my damn silliness. There's nothing extraordinarily special about me, and I think that's intentional. Meaning that what is special is like, yes, I'm a really good teacher, but that this level of success that I've been able to reach, if I can do it, so can you. Because the one thing I'm really good at is teaching. You know, like I'm silly just because that's just my nature, but. Um, that, that one thing that I'm good at is teaching. And so you're, what's holding you back is your fear. What's holding you back is your, well, I don't really want to go live. And I have to wait till my website is perfect. And I don't really want to, oh my God, sis, just do it. Just do it. Because you can go live and delete it. Just do it. Just do it. You know, it's all good. That's you. Mm. Don't come in here and get crazy because, you know, our blocks, my block game is strong. My block game is strong. Yeah. And so I just, I, I want you to try to push back past here because literally someone is like this on the lookout. And what happens is you will see that in the beginning stages, it's like a, a million people out here. And then there are some people who are willing to wake up early. So now it's 100,000. And of that 100,000, there's some people who are willing to go to bed late. Now it's 500,000. And of that 500,000, there are some people who are willing to invest some money into their dream. That makes it 300,000. And of the 300,000, there are some people who are willing to take less so they can get more. So that's, that's uh, where was I? That's, uh, I said 300,000. You know what I mean. That is, um, <laughs> let's just say that's 10,000. And of the 10,000, there are some people who are willing to invest every day. That's 5,000. And of the 5,000, there are some people who, um, even when they're tired, they have not given up. And they practice, practice, practice. So of that 5,000, that's 25. But do you see what I mean? That what happens is you get to a certain level of achievement and you look around. It's like, it's only a handful of us. And there's all these opportunities the most of them are up here. Most opportunities, there might be, you know, uh, of the million, there might be like, I don't know, 2,000 down here. The the real opportunities are up here. This is why you see people like me like this. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me just, because it's crazy when you get to a certain level because most people are not willing to put the work required in. So you get up here and you're like, oh, snap. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Okay. Sometimes I'm just like, y'all don't have nobody else to interview? Y'all don't have nobody else to ask? So what I try to do is, and this is what I suggest you do, is be like this. Come on up with me, girl. Come on on up. Come on, there's opportunities. Here's something for you. I don't even need this. I already got one of these. I don't need this. You can have that. I don't need it. You can share that. You know what? I have two of these already. You can have that. So I believe in sharing once I get because it doesn't make sense to be up there by yourself, bring people with you. But I promise you, if you put in the work, you reach a certain level of excellence. I promise you, I promise you, promise you, promise you the, the level of opportunity and success and the things that you want. It is in, uh, it is in such abundance once you reach a certain level, such a, it is literally waiting on you like this, you know, it's literally waiting on you like this, like <sighs> she late. As per usual, like get there, sis. Put your work in. And I'm not talking about work like work yourself to death. I'm talking about make that leave. You know you want to go live. Oh, you scared because your eyebrows ain't key right now? Go live, sis. I haven't got my eyebrows done in like four months. Look, get up close. Okay. So, y'all still here, right? And so, like, yeah. <laughs> she said, Oprah. I wish. Mm, 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 mm. Got a dream big, yes. I'm telling you, such great explanation. Oh, she's I'm a great teacher. I told you, I'm not good at all the things, but one thing I am good at is teaching math class. Yes, I'm telling you, I'm dealing with being overwhelmed and stopping. Mm -hmm. So ish class, that's a good thing because I sometimes deal with that as well too. That I will get overwhelmed. And a friend of mine gave me the best lesson. I said, Ah, oh, got it. She said the real work. I catch this tea. I need you to listen. This is a good one. The real work is in the reaping, not the sowing. I'm going to say it again and I'm going to explain it. The real work is in the reaping, not the sowing. It's in the picking, not the planting. Okay? Let me show you what that means. That means that planting seems like a lot of work at the time. Okay. Sowing is planting, right? It seems like a lot of work. But do you know what's even more work? When you are picking the actual blessings themselves. 
that is actually more work. And that's why it can be overwhelming because we sometimes we don't know how to pace ourselves when it comes to those things because we've been working so hard. We want to say yes to all the things. Yes, yeah, that's me. Literally this week, I've been working 10, 12 hour days. Yes, 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 yes. Because I'm like, I've been working so hard for this. All these opportunities, I can't say no. Yes, 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 yes. And so like I have become overwhelmed in the blessings because the truth is the reason why you're you're feeling that way is you are working as if, and this, I'm even working through this myself. I'm saying, I'm like, oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm working as if the abundance is not promised to me. So I feel like I got to take advantage right now as if it's going somewhere. Oh, look at that. A word for you, Tiffany. Sorry, this is just me talking to myself. That's why. Oh, snap. I just figured it out with y'all. I'm like, why am I so dang I'm tired? I've been working so hard. Da, 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 da. Because I am working as if the abundance is going to disappear. That I have a fear, not faith, that these things have been set aside for me and they ain't going nowhere. It's like, you know, you ever, like, I'm from a big family. Like I said, I have four sisters. And um, when we, my mother used to go food shopping, as soon as she brought in the juice, the cookies, whatever, we would literally jump on them and eat them, even though I wasn't hungry, because I felt like I had to eat it now because it wasn't going to be there because one of my sisters was going to eat it. Because I knew that, oh, this abundance is limited. And so I'm doing that with my blessings. I'm trying to eat all of the yes the fruit is heavier than the seeds amen that's another one i'm trying to eat all the things at once as if i can't leave some cookies in the cookie jar because someone's gonna come take it now they not tiffany i'm just literally talking to myself i'm like oh i have not been saying no to anything to the point where i'm like exhausting myself and i'm like why girl it will be there you can say no to the interview this week don't want you next week or week after week after mm, but i like that the real work is in the sewing Real work is in the reaping, not the sowing, because the fruit is heavier than the seeds. Chai! The fruit is heavier than the seeds. And I'm not saying real work as in it's bad work, but meaning that maintaining the blessing, maintaining the abundance, maintaining those things like, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. That's what that means. To whom much is given, much is required. That that it, what's going to be required of you is so much bigger then you realize that if you're wanting this abundance, if you're wanting this, these blessings, if you're wanting that, then it's going to be a lot of required of you to maintain it. It's going to be a lot of required of you to be of service with it. I always ask and I always pray that I will be a good steward of the blessings I've been given. That is always my biggest prayer because I know that like all these blessings are coming. I want to be a good steward of those blessings. You know, I love that the fruit is heavier than the seed. We don't work up in here. She said she did. My phone just got thrown across the room, right? We don't say that again. The real work is in the sowing. Is the real work is in the reaping, not the sowing, because the fruit is heavier than the seed. I mean, mm, I have my husband's shorts on. I would get up, but I don't want to shame myself. <laughs> I want to just run across the room, right? And so the 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 sowing. Here's another one. <clears throat> the sowing is meant to to prepare you for the reaping. So if you are like this sowing is too much. Oh, you ain't ready for the reaping. The sowing is meant to prepare you for the reaping because it's going to be work either way. Like what did you, you can't get the thing without, it's going to be work. It's not, I'm not saying you're not going to work joyfully, but it's going to be work. It's not just going to fall into your lap, right? And so mm -mm, the sowing is meant to prepare you for the reaping, prepare you for that journey because the lessons you're going to learn at step one are going to help you at step 10. I promise you, I am I'm like at step seven now, like, oh, I remember this lesson from step one. Woo, child. I remember, I'm glad I learned it back then because Lord have mercy. I would hate to learn it now, but that might be a million dollar mistake. That was a hundred dollar mistake and I boohoo then, but I'm glad I made that hundred dollar mistake so I can now live and keep my million dollars. You see what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. Since you love my hair, thank you. I put it up for you guys because it was looking crazy. That is the one little vanity I allowed myself. So... Mm, 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 mm. Yes, we talking on tonight. On tonight, I know usually you guys are used to um me speaking about money, but you know, to me, money is a tool to to live life abundantly. Someone said, "Save this life." I don't think I'm gonna save this life because I've been um I've been you know I've been I've been talking too long. I don't like to save lives that be like ten thousand hours long. All right, um, I'll take a few questions and then I'm gonna be at. Come on, Lord, speak through her. Oh, thank you. Yes. So I just feel like I just want what I want for you. I always tell this to everyone who I am in contact with. I believe in a win, 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 win. I would tell this to my to the people that work with me. I tell this to the people I work 
you know, that I serve, that I cannot want from me and not want for you. It's just not built that way. I'm not. And so I want abundance. I want joy. I want love. I want all of that things. And I want that for you. And so that's why I'm sharing tonight about your fear. And I know because I've been there is holding you back. You're afraid to showcase yourself. You're afraid to say, and I, I mean, I, I mean, I still am afraid. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. This, these are fears I'm, I too work through and it's holding you back. So one thing at a time, try something scary, push past because on the other side, I promise it, the fear makes the wolf bigger than he is. Fear makes the wolf bigger than he is. You push back, you realize that that wasn't a big old scary wolf. Actually, it was a baby wolf. But on the other side, there's such abundance. I just wish most people just never get above the surface. I wish you would just elevate just a little bit. You would see the air is clearer up here. You elevate a little bit more, it's even clearer. I'm telling you. Actually, you know what? Here's a book I want you to all read. See, I could be, um, I'm still going to do this because, you know, this is my book. This is my, well, I have a bunch of like adult books, but if you got babies, ain't she cute? It's supposed to be like my little stepdaughter. Well, she's like 13 now, but this is for the babies. Happy birthday, Molly Moore, a financial literacy book for kids. Get into it. You can go to mollymore.com to cop it. But that's not what we're talking about right here. It just happened to be the book that I want you to get. I want everybody to get this book. I don't, I don't know this man personally, but when I tell you for what we're talking about tonight, on tonight, this book right here, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. It seems like a silly name for a book. You're like, well, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Okay? So, but what this book it is one of the best books. And it's not even, it's not like, you know, sometimes the books are like, you're like, how many words? Mm -mm, it's not that many words in this book. I mean, it's an easy read. When I tell you this book, I love this book because it is about a seagull, you, who looks around and says, everyone, all the other seagulls fly low and eat chum. Chum is like fish guts and like, you know what I mean? Like, and like or just basically all the seagulls care about is flying low and eating trash, basically. And Jonathan Livingston Seagull says, there's got to be more life than that. So Jonathan says, how come seagulls don't fly faster? How come seagulls don't fly higher? So Jonathan practices flying faster and higher. And at first people are like, oh, whatever, Jonathan's a weirdo. Okay. And then they start to get like, his parents start saying, Jonathan, you have to start acting normal like regular seagulls. You got to fly low. And you got to go ahead out here and eat like every the rest of them. And Jonathan was like, no, there's more. There's got to be more than that. This is me. I said to myself, I love being a preschool teacher, but there's something, there's a fire in me that says there's more for you, Tiffany. Not that, not that preschool teaching is not more, but more for me that I was supposed to take my teaching in other directions. And something was like, there's got to be more than this. People will tell you no. People will shame you. Sometimes even your family, like Jonathan Livingston Seagull. So Jonathan secretly practices. He gets found out. They throw him out the Seagull Society. Because some of y'all going to get pushed out by your own, your own friends. Because they don't get it. They don't get why do you keep reaching for more. Why do you keep going higher? Why do you want more? It's cute here. You not happy with what we got? Jonathan said no. So Jonathan said, okay, I'll go it alone. And sometimes, especially in entrepreneurship, you won't have to go it alone, sis. I know some of you are like, I'm not sis. Sis. My audience is mostly women and deal with that, right? So sometimes you have to go it alone. The first five years, it was me, myself, and I. That's what I got to the end. That's it. And sometimes you have to go it alone. Jonathan went it alone. But Jonathan said, you know what? I'd rather go it alone in my pursuit for excellence than go it together in mediocrity. Hey, I'd rather go it alone in my pursuit of excellence then go together in mediocrity. He didn't say that's like those words, those my words, but I'm just saying that's the premise. So Jonathan goes it alone. He's working toward flying faster and higher and faster and higher. He reaches a certain level, pop, and he sees these other seagulls. He said, oh, snap, where y'all from? They were like, we too have been working on flying higher and faster. Let me show you what we learned. Jonathan finds his tribe because at some point, you will find a tribe of excellence if you stick with it long enough. They will find you. They will come get you. Didn't I tell you? People be tapping me on the shoulder all day long. Tiffany, Tiffany, I want to give you an opportunity. I see what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I'm like, you know me? You watch me? I've been watching for 10 years, girl. I'm like, wow. Jonathan finds his tribe, and Jonathan works higher and hard and, and flies higher until he finally reaches. You got to read the book to find out. 
But like, isn't that, she said, I have so much energy. I do. Now you see why I was a preschool teacher. I've always been hyper. <laughs> but isn't that, she said, you are such a teacher where you're teaching this book. I know. <laughs> I am such a teacher. I told you I might not be good at nothing else, but I know one thing. I'm a good teacher. Right? So can you imagine when I used to teach preschool? The kids used to love me because meanwhile, that was like 10, 20, 20 years ago. I was a teacher and like, so if I had this energy now, I imagine when I was 20, you know, I'd be bouncing off the walls more than the three and four year olds. But it's such a good book because it is a reminder. So I'll just, let me see if there's anything in here. Cause some of this stuff, mm, 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 I'm just going to see like, mm, 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 mm. so wow. He says, mm, mm, mm. what he had once hoped for, for the flock. This is what he wanted the flock to do. He now gained for himself alone. He learned to fly and was not sorry for the price he had paid. Get into it. Jonathan Siegel discovered that boredom, fear, and anger are the reason that a seagull's life is so short. Mm, and Jonathan don't preach. And with these gone from his thought, boredom, fear, and anger. Didn't I tell you fear is holding you back, sis? Didn't I tell you? Right? With these gone from his thought, he lived a long, fine life indeed. Okay. Jonathan Livingston, get into. I mean, see, honestly, I just reordered it because I couldn't find my one of my Kindle. They have a Kindle version, and um, it's just such a good book for those of you who are wanting to push back, push past mediocrity, and really walk into your excellence. And so, my children's book, because you ask, it's called Happy Birthday, Molly Moore. You can find it at mollymore.com. M A L I M O R E. It's just a book that teaches financial education. Well age-appropriate financial education to kids. This lesson in particular is teaching donating. And so this is little Molly, little chocolate self. And um, she gets a bunch of presents for her birthday. And at some point, Molly decides that her presents are more importantly important than her family and friends. So much so that there's a rhyme in the book that goes over and over. Each time a new guest comes to the door, more says Molly, more, more, more. So the book rhymes, there's counting. I mean, honestly, the pictures are beautiful. If I do say so myself, and I do say so, this is like one of my favorites. So look at little Molly. This is like when she learned her lesson, she realized, no one's there to help me blow up my candle. Because Molly been greedy. Molly been selfish. They over Molly. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah. And so at the end, she decides to donate some of her gifts. And so it's a really great way if you have kids three to seven. If a little younger, two, a little older, um, eight, nine, that's fine. Um, and right now it's. 20% off at mollymore.com, M-A-L-I-M-O-R-E. Type it in the um, comments for me. But yeah, I'm really proud of it, honestly, because um, it's full circle for me to bring financial education to the babies because I think that if your kids can start learning what age-appropriate financial education feels like, then they'll be in better shape when they're our age. Because in the back of the book, too, one of the things I did was I created extend the lesson questions and activities that you can do. So like, see, I was like, let me give you some activities and questions for you to parent. Um, so that way, or the, or the educator, because I know sometimes it's hard to figure out like, what do you, how do you take a book and make it, I don't know, and extend it. And so that's what I did. It's like, look, look at Molly. See, she donated some of her gifts with her and her little brother. And I see such a great book. It's like, I'm really, um, I'm really I'm just like proud of myself for seeing more and more and more. Molly was greedy, honey, but she learned her lesson because ain't nobody there to blow her candles. Um, Yeah. What, what y'all saying? What y'all what y'all talking about? All right, so um, I'm gonna go out. So like I said, get you Molly Moore, M A L I M O R E Molly Moore dot com, and honestly, get you Jonathan Livingston Seagull. I'm actually gonna probably read this tonight again because y'all just got me fired up. And um, if you have a question about LRA, the best place to go that's my online academy is go to LRA Support dot com and submit a ticket. Um, and they'll help you because you DM me. I literally get hundreds of DMs a day. So I, I go through them every day, but I, I can't answer all because it's not just Instagram. You think Twitter, Facebook, all the places I get DMs. So I check all my inboxes every day and try to get to as many as I can, but it's just, is what it is. So if you have a question about the literature Academy, go to LRA support.com and they will help you. All right. On that note, I y'all if i do say so myself and i do say so myself <laughs>